the problem in Syracuse was that you had uh, lots of vacant houses where drug dealers potentially, you know, took over or squatters lived in. And the city's position was to just do demolition. The banks had run away 30 years before. Um, no mortgages were being, um, it was redlined. You know, when they mentioned North Camden, North Camden was saying like, no, um, it was talking like if it was um, hell, basically. A banker near us said that 50% of the families in her district cannot possibly apply for a housing loan. Housing right now in Albuquerque, it's, you cannot buy a house. I mean an affordable house. There were buildings that were being bought and sold um, three, four times over within a two-year period or more. And each time that happened, you know, it, the rents went up, the rents went up, the rents went up. Rents were going up so much that ordinary working people were finding that they were at risk of becoming homeless and were becoming homeless. Older people were losing their property because of high taxes. And outsiders were coming and buying their tax certificates up and they were being squeezed out of their homes. There was no help for them in Key West. The leadership was like they were asleep. We now have the distinction of having the highest real estate values, uh, just about the highest median income and the lowest wage base in Washington State. It's a perfect scenario for a community land trust to come in. Community land trusts are nonprofit membership organizations that take a new approach to ownership of land and housing. The three land trust stories in this video show some of the ways that local residents in growing numbers of communities across the United States are organizing to gain control over their land and resources and using the land trust model to create a stock of permanently affordable housing. I was a single mother with three children at that time. I'd just gotten divorced. And I was working two jobs and trying to go to school and take care of my kids. And the more money I make, the more they ask for. And I remember there were times when I had maybe $15 left over to carry me on to two weeks. And I was getting very frustrated with the system of, you know, trying to have a decent place to live. Uh, for me, the future was quite bleak. Uh, I just couldn't help but think, uh, what, I'm going to do this all my life? I can't do, I can't get ahead this way. I almost felt like, well, maybe I should just quit, go on public assistance, and let them take care of me. Buying a house was never a dream of mine. I never thought that I could ever afford it. But I was sitting in my office one day, and I was going through the newspaper, and I saw an ad in the paper saying that if you want to own a home, here's an opportunity, no money down. I'm like, right, yeah, right. But I felt like, uh, let me take a chance. I'm going to call. I met the executive director, and I said, well, do you have any vacant houses right now? And she said, yes. And uh, she brought me over to Exum Street, and the house was just in repair. But I loved it. I'm a country girl. I love the old houses. I love the front porch. Uh, I went inside, and it had the high ceilings. And I was like, this is it. This is my house. The organization Linda called was the Durham Community Land Trustees, based in the West End neighborhood in Durham, North Carolina, next to the upscale neighborhood surrounding Duke University. The Durham Land Trust, like many others around the country, was started to improve and preserve the deteriorating local housing stock that had been abandoned by absentee property owners. If you drive through Durham, you'll see and there's a lot of houses that are boarded up, and that's because absentee landlords can come in. They know that there are a lot of low to moderate income people that need housing. A lot of substandard houses, they used to be called liquor houses, if you want to put it. Actually, four walls, windows, no heat, and people used to come and stay for a little while. The landlords didn't do anything. They never complained. A lot of people don't know that they have a voice to say, I don't deserve to live this way. They can't afford anything better, so the landlords don't have any pressure behind them to fix it up. During the 
year of about 1950, the elder people started dying out. And then that's when the landlords started moving into this area. Little by little, they took the houses over. And little by little, the, the, the younger generation sold the houses and moved out this area, moved north. And little by little, the landlord took the land for a little or nothing. What we want now is to make this a more family-type community like we have always had. My land trust got in here, and they did a beautiful job. Somehow or other, they uh, gave the people what they wanted. That was housing. This is a typical Durham Community Land Trustee Rehab. We've gutted it with volunteer efforts. We will take this house and where there's tongue and groove all, it'll be all new sheetrock, all new walls, new windows, new doors, fully insulated from the attic to the floors, actually blown into the walls. Everything will be new in terms of new fixtures, new kitchen, New doors, this will be back to regular height, and then the addition will be put back on the end. And after the resident selection process, we'll have a new resident move in for a home ownership opportunity. I rang the door so I can hear how it sounds. Listen, listen. Wow. Uh, the house is great. Look it. This is the living room. This is the kitchen. Look, this is what I have to do. Here's the bathroom. And this is my room. Is that where you said you wanted to be? Yeah. Okay. My old house was falling apart and my grandma decided to move and to a new house. And nobody don't want even want to live there. Come on up, pick up on the land trust started work on this street and was invited in by the community with a community march that was organized to board up this house because there were drugs and other illegal activities occurring here that they wanted to restrict, which has been real typical on this street with any of the vacant houses. Since then, we have done five rehabs, and over time, it's really become a much more stable street and this is typical on all the streets that we target. If we're able to get three, four, five houses rehabbed, it tends to stabilize with the home ownership. Since the land trust has come into this community, things have changed tremendously. We're talking about quality, affordable homes. This is a quality house. Central air, central heat, thermal windows, energy efficient. The land trust prides themselves on having quality not substandards. And the, the surrounding community has taken note to that. Land trusts reduce the cost of acquiring and renovating their properties and the initial purchase price to homeowners with government subsidies and private donations, including contributions of volunteer labor. I asked them at that time, was well, how much money do I need? Uh, oh, about $1,500 to get in the house, to own it. And they were like, yes. They sat down with me and explained to me that I would be purchasing my home, but they would have to retain the ownership of the land. At that particular time, I wanted the house, and when I asked them why did they maintain ownership of the land, they explained to me that the purpose, they, the reason they do that is to guarantee lifelong affordability. That it, should I ever decide to, to leave this home and move to the traditional market, that they would give this house back to someone who was in the same circumstances I was. I don't own the land, but I have full rights to the land. You know, and I, the, the one point I keep telling people, this is not a step, you're not fixed here forever. Should I move on in life, I will leave this house to my children. It will always be affordable to them. <laughs>